Hey, welcome to What's the Risk, hosted by myself, Daniel Crow, and Peter Mansell, founder of Mansell Financial Group, a financial advice business he founded in 1980. This is a simple video series we hope investors can use to better understand index and portfolio performance, along with answering and addressing some investment questions and dilemmas. This episode is on the MSCI World X Australia Index as measured in Australian dollars. This is large to mid-cap stocks, usually about 14 to 1,500 of those stocks in 22 developed markets. Some people would know the ETF that seeks to track the return of this index as Vanguard's VGS. Sponsoring ourselves, a book we wrote. If you'd like to read it, it's available at Amazon. Disclaimer, please pause and read. Suffice to say, our intent is educational and not rendering financial advice. Don't make us tap to sign. These are simple concepts. We just like investors to better understand performance in the short and long term. So the periodic performance, obviously, it always looks good looking back, but uh, the 30-year number there is worth noting because it doesn't quite seem as good as the other ones. And there's a reason for that. We'll get into that a bit later. Yeah, absolutely, Daniel. You know, the, the long-term results going back as far as 1975, you know, look great. Most investors would look at that and go, well, that's pretty impressive. Happy with that. Even even the one, three, five and 10 years, you know, really very impressive as well. Uh, but there is a dip there in the middle uh, and investors need to be aware that, you know, global equities over time have delivered very good results for investors, but it hasn't always been blue sky. Uh, so growth of wealth is... Uh, looks great. Obviously, five years longer than the ASX 300. I, one question I'd have, um, when it's out to this long, do you think it's borderline hard to comprehend for the average investor when you're seeing something that's, you know, so many decades? Absolutely. When you think about the time frame that we're seeing there, that's 48 years. That's as long or longer than pretty much anyone's working life. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it is very challenging to comprehend. You know, in, in 1975, I was just finishing high school. You know, I, I, I didn't think about money much then. You know, I was a, a, a young teenager that was, you know, being cared for by a couple of parents, you know, and, and here I am, you know, 45 years later, you know, headed close to retirement, having observed financial markets, you know, uh, fairly closely for 40-odd years. But, wow. There's just there's, it's so different today in terms of how we view money to what it was back then. You know, a, a dollar bought quite a bit back in 1975. A dollar doesn't buy much today. Uh, so range of returns. Um, you got a very big one year number there. Also notable, there's the potential for a negative ten year, which is something that we did not see on the ASX 300. Yeah, look, we've got. Uh, a massive range from positive 93 to minus 33, you know, that's, that's a variance of 126% over um, those one-year periods from, from best to worst. It's ironic that, that when you think about shares from an Australian perspective too, the variance numbers are different, but the range is almost identical, um, you know, which, which probably indicates for most investors that, you know, we tend to behave as aggressively towards an asset class or pessimistically uh, in a similar way. Uh, but but looking at, at what the chart really tells us is that the longer you invest for, the closer the result gets to the average, irrespective of whether, you know, you happen to be one of the lucky investors, you know, that, that invests at the bottom of a down market or one of the unluckiest investors where you invest just before a major down market. And, and we can see from this particular chart that the three, five, 10 and 20 year worst results all start in the year 2000. And that's because that was a recovery point that then went into a down market with the second Gulf War and then was followed up not that long after by the global financial crisis. The rolling annual returns are the big cluster of badness there is again in the 2000s, which is known as a lost decade in the US. It's obviously the index here is heavily influenced by US stocks. But outside that, it's interesting how good returns actually look consistently. If you kind of exclude that 2000 period, it's just that's the period that caused most of the problems on the, the returns for this index. Yeah, it's um, it's really quite pronounced, isn't it? The sheer volume of positive results above the line, and and 
how there's very little by comparison below the line other than, you know, that decade between, you know, 2000 and 2009. Um, but it, it's important to recognise you know, that it can't always be blue sky. You, you look at the early part of that chart from 1975, say, through to 1985, you know, investors that invested outside Australia got one heck of a return. It was twofold. One was, of course, the return on global equity markets. But the other thing was that during that period, the Aussie dollar was losing value, um, which, which, of course, increased the returns that you received if you invested Australian dollars outside of Australia at the beginning of that period. Yeah, that's another factor, obviously, that plays into this. This is um, an unhedged index too. Absolutely. And and if you come back to um, the, the downturns of, of 2000 through to 2009, if you look at that period, not only were, were equity market returns lower, as, as clearly shown by this chart, but one of the factors that, that drove that was that the Aussie dollar actually strengthened during that decade. Mm. And, and that means the value of a foreign investment um, doesn't improve as much when measured in Australian dollars. Uh, so historic chance uh, of a positive and negative, and this gets to the heart of that uh, 2000s period. And I guess there's an interesting thing here that I've um, highlighted. You can see that you wouldn't normally see a chance of a negative return going up over a longer time period, but the three is 15%, and then five, it goes to 18%. Yeah, look, it, it's of course possible. Uh, in any data series, you can have a, an outlier, whether they be good or bad. But in particular there, you know, there were a number of periods over that um, previous chart where they overlap, where there are two major downturns within a five-year period. So it, it stands to reason that that's possible. You compare the one year or the one month result to the 10 year result through the passage of time, the chances of a negative result have dropped significantly. But it doesn't mean they have to drop over every period of time. And just for the, the 10 year, obviously, because you're seeing a, a 10 year negative there chance, it's 10%. There were 48 negative 10 year periods that have been recorded. And, uh, and I think that I think that importantly there. Um, investors need to be aware that that those 48 10 year negative periods were almost certainly all grouped together. The largest fall in time and recovery. So this is a uh, a whopper compared to the ASX 300. And I, I guess it gets to explaining why in that previous chart there was a increase in negative periods over the five year versus the versus the three year because you've had as you explained, tried to recover, but fell again at, at its worst, down 48%, 168 months to get back to square again. Yeah, look, there's no question that this particular period, as you referred to earlier, the lost decade, was an extreme outlier when it comes to financial markets. It's also important to think about what happened at both the front end of this chart and what happened subsequent to 2014. What we know is that equity markets globally had a really strong series of results prior to the year 2000 and equally have had really strong results in the last decade. This unfortunately is, yes, the worst period that an investor could have uh, had to endure, but they should also reflect on the strong gains that they'd experienced before this period and then if they were patient, the strong gains that they received after this period concluded. It also shows that there can be an extended period of time where an investor can be unlucky with market returns. Not everyone gets the average over every period, you know, and the average 10-year result certainly moves around from time to time, as this chart shows. We can't all win all the time unless we're just really patient and wait out these downturns. And risk-return relationship, obviously from 1990 again, um, as we're using the cash and fixed interest there for reference. But, yeah, as you can see, uh, the ASX 300 over that time period is definitely uh, doing better. That's due to that, uh, that downturn. A big part of the... Uh reason why the ASX result appears to be better than the MSCI over that particular, you know, 33 years is the first 10 years of that 
the Aussie dollar was rising in value. And, and it, it certainly was handicapping uh, the performance of global shares from an Aussie investor's perspective. And, and those that chose to uh, eliminate global equities from their portfolios certainly suffered in you know, the 2010s. I would say that, that this is still a very meaningful chart to show that investors that are willing to accept that equities are more volatile do still get rewarded. They've just got to be patient. Sources and descriptions of data. So thanks for joining us on this episode. See you next time.